Hi again, Mark here from Talking Bass. Today we're going to look at one of my favourite study books for bass, The Bass Tradition by Todd Kuhlman. It's absolutely full of great study material. It can help with every aspect of your playing from reading to technique, walking bass, soloing and more. And it's a great way of getting started with jazz bass playing, especially for those of you with no background or even interest in jazz. We'll look at how to use the book and work through one of my favourite examples from the great Israel Crosby. We'll take apart one of the lines and also see just how a simple two-bar phrase can be the springboard for a ton of extra study and practice that you can apply to every style, not just jazz. As always, the lesson material is all there over at TalkingBass.net. Just click that link in the info below. Also, like the video, subscribe to the channel and leave a comment below. Then remember to check out the totally free membership over at Talking Bass. Talking Bass is now a complete social network for bass players. Just log in and you'll be able to connect with over 100,000 other bass players from all over the world in the forums, groups and chat rooms. It's very much like Facebook, but for bass players, but with the addition of over 450 free bass lessons, a ton of free practice resources and a set of ebook downloads such as the Scale Reference Manual. Then if you want to take things further, there are the premium courses on everything from beginner bass to reading music to scales, chord tones, slap bass, ear training and much, much more. So sign up today and remember it's totally free and then you can join a great bass community. So here we have the book The Bass Tradition by Todd Kuhlman. It's published by Jamie Abersold and it's one of the many Abersold jazz books and you can buy it online from places like Amazon for about £12 or $18, which I'll link to below. The Bass Tradition is basically a journey through the history of jazz bass. The book works through all the most innovative players in chronological order, providing a little biographical info and a quick summation of their style and historical impact. We start with Jimmy Blanton and gradually work through players like Slam Stewart, Oscar Pettiford, Ray Brown, Paul Chambers, Scott LaFaro, and many more. For each bass profile, we have several transcriptions of bass lines and solos taken from some of the player's most famous recordings, all of which feature key elements of their playing style. At the end of each transcription, you'll find some extra notes that summarize the main stylistic factors at play, which can be really cool when it comes to analyzing the music. At the start of the book, Todd provides a preface that lays out the best approach for using the book. There are nine steps to the approach, which include the recommendations that you should study each player in order without skipping ahead, you should find a recording of the transcription, and then you should listen to it several times before reading along, then learning away from the recording in your own time, playing along with the recording, with the transcription, and then away from the recording and the transcription by memory. Now, I find these steps really important because they give you a method for not only using the book, but any other transcriptions that you find. Todd Kuhlman is also on record as saying that you should focus on creating your own transcriptions rather than following those of others. I totally agree with that, but I also think that for a new student or someone totally new to jazz, a book like this gives you a great starting point. As Todd states, I think it's really important to track down the original recordings of these transcriptions. Aside from everything else, they're a great journey through the history of jazz bass playing. You'll learn a lot about how jazz bass lines and solos evolved through the different eras of the style, and learn a lot about the key innovations in bass. Each transcription contains a wealth of musical content and study material, and I'd recommend focusing on each one in turn for as long as you need to. Don't be in a hurry to jump ahead or just try, you know, a bar here and there. Treat each transcription like you might treat a larger piece like a Bach cello suite. Take your time and learn them a bar at a time until you have the whole line under your fingers and memorized at the original tempo. Learn it in your own time with no pressure from clicks or tracks. Memorize it first, slowly, and then build up the speed. Now, as well as the obvious benefits that the book presents, you'll also find other benefits come from delving deeper into the individual phrases and the musical content within. As an example, I'm going to play you a short extract from the Israel Crosby section. This is the first 16 bars of the line from the Ahmad Jamal recording of But Not For Me. So with the metronome at 120 beats per minute on two and four. One, two, a one, two, three, four.
So, as you can hear, it's a great line with some absolutely beautiful melodic phrases, and as I pointed out, it's worth working through the whole line. This is just an excerpt. But as I mentioned, you can take some of the individual phrases in there and really take them apart. So, the phrase we're going to look at is this descending line. Okay. So the chords here are C major 7, uh, or C major for the first bar, where we play and then we have E minor 7 and A7 for the second bar, where we're coming down leading into the D minor 7. So what's going on here? Well, we're basically working our way down the bass neck using inversions of a C major triad but we're using a diatonic approach note to lead into the first note of each inversion as we go. So for the first arpeggio, we descend through the C major up here. G, E, C. So we're coming down from the fifth down, G, E, C. And we lead into the G with the A. So we have A, G, E, C. Okay, so that's the basic idea behind it. We've got the C major triad, C, E, G. We're coming down it but we're adding that neighbor note, the approach note. It's diatonic, it's in the, scale, in the C major scale, to lead into the G. But then we add that nice little bit of rhythm in there with the little triplet. Okay. Then we just apply the same chord tone approach to each of the C major inversions. Now, if you don't know anything about inversions, I've got a lesson linked in the info below. But just as a refresher, if we take a C major triad, which is the notes C, E, and G, that there, root third fifth, that's called root position because it starts on the root note. But if we start the arpeggio on a different chord tone, we get an inversion. So if we play those three notes, C, E, G, but we start on the E in ascending order, E, G, C, that's the first inversion. So we're starting on the sort of second note of the arpeggio, the third, okay? Then if we start on the G, G, C, E, just working up them through order, uh, in order, that's second inversion. So we have C major triad root position, first inversion, and second inversion. Then we're back up to root position, first inversion, and so on. So for this line, we're working down through the inversions. So if we look at the, uh, the root position up here, C, E, G, and we descend through it, G, E, C, that's our first line, okay, that we added the approach note to, ignore the approach note for now. There's the root position, then move down to the second inversion, so we've got the E, C, G. Then we're down to the first inversion, but we're starting up at the top of it on the C, C, G, E, and then we're down to the root position, G, E, C. Okay, so we're just playing through those inversions, but in the other direction, coming down, So now we just add that diatonic approach note to each of the inversions. So remember how we started out? We had A, G, E, C at the top. Then we move down to this second inversion. What's the diatonic approach that we'd have there? Well, the top note was the E, so what's the next note up in the C major scale? It's the F. So that's the F there, at, uh, which I'm playing there at the 10th fret of the, uh, of the G string. Okay, so we play that leading into the E. So it's F to E, okay, which gives us a kind of suspended feel on the, uh, it's kind of a sus, sus four, really. So then we come down to the first inversion. And we add the diatonic approach note on the top. So what's the top note? So that's C. What's the next note up in the C major scale? It's the D. So we've got D, C, G, E. Here are adding these uh, non-chord tones in there, these approach notes, can really add some melodic interest. Instead of it just being the basic, we've got this nice, and then back down to the bottom. Okay? So now we can just change up the rhythm so we incorporate that nice little triplet and it gives us the following. And then when we get down to the bottom one, we just come down in eighth notes leading into the D. It actually plays the open A instead of the C leading into the D. Um, okay. So all of that line. Okay, and 
that's the whole of that line. So you can see how this is just using those approach notes, those inversions to create this lovely descending line down the neck. So with just two bars of that transcription, we found a wonderful little line that we can use as an exercise for working through inversions and that highlights how we can make use of diatonic approach notes to add melodic interest to our bare bone chord tones. So by then playing that line in all keys, we get a really good exercise that stretches your thinking and also you know, moves through position shifts, works on your technique, works on everything. So if we were to play that in G major, so think of what the, uh, uh, the inversions are there. We can come down through that line. Okay, and then into the A minor. So you want to try it in all keys. Now, as I said earlier, this isn't just about learning to be a jazzer. These lines can translate to every style. James Jameson developed his revolutionary style of electric playing as a result of playing upright jazz bass and studying musical content like this. So as an example of a more pop orientated line, you could make use of those inversions in a fill like this. So that's the bass tradition by Todd Kuhlman. I'll be covering a lot more bass books in lessons to come in all different styles. So please like, comment, subscribe to the channel and follow the link below for more lessons and videos. Then sign up to the Talking Bass Network and membership to gain access to a massive community of like-minded bass players and a ton of bass practice resources and downloads. Okay, I'll see you next week.